the cracking occurred a couple of days before Christmas. And then a couple of days later, the whole thing collapsed. And the way that it broke is very unusual and uh, very rare. How old is a tree? Right? About 160 years old. Well, Andrew's been talking about something like this for about four years. He calls it the fallen giants, and he wanted to create something special from a number of big trees that have fallen in the gardens, and it's now happening. Yeah, no, you know what though? It's part of, I think it looks like the, it still belongs to the earth. I think it's okay. okay. Can we go down any further, Carl, or is that it? I've always had this thing, a lot of horticulture, once a tree falls over, they want to get rid of it, you know, clean it up. But we felt um, we wanted to recognise this as a fallen giant. Uh, and as part of that, it just came as an idea that we could create this meeting place, sitting place, sculptural piece uh, that would allow the tree to go on giving. So it was just a, a natural response in many ways to the tree falling over. So Terry, you can see the angle of that, can't you? This is where it goes here. So for probably about 20 years, they basically started reducing the canopy very slowly over time, knowing that the structure of the tree was imperfect that long ago. So yeah, we probably bought an extra 20 years of time with the tree. There's a lot of investment in it to sort of try to keep it as long as possible. Um, and ultimately, Jim found a, a crack one day in our, in our audit process, and one bit fell, and the other bit fell shortly after, just around Christmas. When you have open-grown trees and branches that are competing for light, and they extend laterally, um, tremendous loads are generated in the canopy, and that's where the failure will begin. There's been some large trees removed nearby in the past probably five years. That can change the effect of the wind on this tree because before it was uh, protected by the other trees, blocking strong wind. It's those factors and also there was decay in the main trunk. So it's a combination of several different things that actually led to it collapsing. We've had literally hundreds and hundreds of people saying, you know, what are you doing with the tree? Please don't just get rid of it. Is there another way? The other thing that's really important here is that we're planting two new trees that will come up amongst this sitting place. So. That's the other really important thing in the botanic gardens. We've lost one tree, we're going to plant two others so that we continue the living story as well. It's been just uh, really, really intriguing to me to watch people come into this space and to make it their own. So we haven't put out signs, we haven't said this is a place to sit, we haven't said this is a, a serious place to contemplate. And I, th I think everyone gets out of this something different. So some see the old tree that they used to know and I've, and I've talked to people who remember picnicking under the tree and they're now coming here and sitting and thinking about those times. And others, I think, look at the tree almost um, scientifically. So there's a little bit in here for everyone 
and I love the fact that people sort of make their own or choose their own adventure to have with this wood. I always come in every year for my birthday at this time because all the leaves are here and um, and, uh, and this is one tree that I won't see the leaves of. <laughs> this time around, no. Yeah. But what a beautiful project they've done and uh, and it will now keep the tree going. It just looks like it's resting. Where it fell, it's resting and it's peaceful. It's a bit of a risk for a botanic garden in a way and it, and it took a lot of trust, I think, that the public would embrace that idea that they're, they're seeing a, a tree that once was alive in a different way. And also trust from people like our amazing donors who without their support and their trust in us, uh, things like this just couldn't happen. There's still a lot of great things about it, you know, there's, it's supporting life, even though it may not re-sprout, it's still supporting biodiversity. It's a, it's a great monument to the tree that was here. The whole point of this project is that it really keeps you learning a lesson. People still come here and learn. And like uh, Peter asked me what the most important tree in the garden was one day and I said, oh, it's this one, because the amount of people who come and look and can learn from something like this, it's really unique. And that's probably what's been going on the last couple of decades with this. So um, the new trees will you know, be a testament to how we'll manage those, learning from this. I mean, that, that's the first thing that struck me. When Andrew showed me the photo, the aerial photo, of the way that it collapsed, I immediately thought, well, that's beautiful. <laughs> but, you know, it's a, it was a disaster, yet it was also beautiful.